All right, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to write ad copy inside Google Ads. And ad copy is a very important part of campaign success for Google Ads. Because if you don't have good ad copy, you're going to have a low click-through rate, which generally leads to a high cost per click, which generally leads to a high cost per lead. So it's very important you get your ad copy down, have a high click-through rate, and keep those lead costs as low as possible. Now, there's a few things I want to go over, basic principles that we adhere to uh, when writing ad copy. And then I'll show you a few examples inside our account and show you what actually works and things we've done that have proven success records. So the first thing I look at is always think from the customer's perspective. And really, you want them to go, oh, my God, this person's like reading my brain. This is exactly what my problem is. And you don't do that by boasting about how great your company is and it really astounds me how many companies will just put in their ad copy best company ever or sorry ad copy we're the best company ever we're 30 years in business we're great pick us like it it doesn't solve the customer's problem and that's what the ad copy should do or it should give you a way to solve it and you got to think like if someone has a furnace repair problem, so say their furnace is broken, you could have ad copy that says furnace broken question mark. We can have text on standby or we have text on standby ready to solve the issue. And the person goes, oh, oh that, like that's exactly what my issue is compared to we're the best company ever. The person is much more likely to resonate with, oh, I have a broken furnace. If I click on this ad, I can have, you know, HVAC text in my house within, you know, an hour or whatever it is. Uh, really, you have to think from the customer's perspective, and if you do that, chances are you're going to have a good ad. Uh, and it might not be the first one. Like you always have to A/B test this stuff. You may have, you know, five losing ads, and then the sixth one be great, and you're like, okay, that that's the one we're going with. And then every other ad group is just going to be like an extension of that or a little change. And that's really what you should be doing when it comes to ads. Really thinking from the customer's perspective and figuring out how can I make it so I'm solving their their problem and really resonating with them. That being said, another important thing is message match throughout the ad. An ad quality score really affects cost per click. So if your message match uh, is not good, you will have a bad quality score, which in turn raises your cost per click, which leads to higher lead costs and so on and so forth. Bad overall campaign. Um, so it's important to get the message match down. And essentially what message match is, is if you have a keyword that says pool installation, and then your actual ad reads pool installation companies near me. And then your landing page says pool installation services in XYZ city. Um, this is all matched. The message is one complete match. It's all good. But if you have one keyword that says HVAC, your ad really has nothing to do about HVAC. And then your landing page has literally nothing to do about HVAC. That's bad message match. And, and it's going to cause the customer cognitive dissonance. They're more likely to leave. Uh, and you're not you're more likely to not get a conversion or a lead out of it because there's just no uh, adhesion in the entire funnel your customer is going through. So it's very important that everything lines up. And that's why we recommend uh, using multiple ad groups, not just one big one. So you can really narrow down your ads to each keyword and make it as specific as possible for success. Uh, another thing is keep it simple. Don't really overcomplicate stuff with language. Um, there's a good story of David Ogilvy, and there was a, one of his um, employees wanted to use this really long, complicated word, and they were selling to dairy farmers. And this isn't a pick on dairy farmers or whatever, but he asked, do you think dairy farmers speak like that? And the guy is like, well, yeah, they'll understand it. And he said, okay, go spend two weeks on a dairy farm and then come back to me and see if uh, you still want to use that word. And if you do, you can use it. So he went and spent two weeks on a dairy farm. He came back and said, I'm not using that word. <laughs> so you really have to speak to the customer. And generally, even people, and they have a good study on this, people who are buying super expensive sport cars, where you think these people are super educated and they know what they're about, they still use a grade eight language when determining what sports car to buy. So don't go past grade eight. Um, I don't really see any use in it. Maybe if you were doing like uh, medical stuff, uh, you, you could get more advanced in the actual technical, uh, technical aspects of the language, but really you want to keep it simple. Don't over complicate things with like fancy words and stuff like that. Keep it simple so everyone can understand it. The next thing I see commonly is spelling mistakes in certain ads. You really want to go over with either a program or a word processing program just to make sure there's no spelling mistakes. Uh, it doesn't look good if your company can't spell. So that's a very important thing. Always look over spelling mistakes. Uh, another thing is stand out. 
and this is why I like adding questions at the beginning of a ad. So it's like, is your furnace repair or is your furnace broken? Question mark that really stands out compared to the general. We are the best company or you know, 30 years in business. Um, you really have to change things up and that takes time to really understand the ad landscape. Uh, look what your competitors are doing and try to differentiate from that. Uh, generally, it's not that difficult to do in a lot of the spaces we do it, uh, just because we, we specialize in the skilled trades and a lot of those companies just, uh, they don't spend much time on their ad copy, which gives us a fantastic boost when, when writing comp, uh, copy and we really can stand out. But that being said, you really want to try and stand out. You want to change the ad copy, make it look different and really try to solve your customer problem. Um, another thing is they have a reason to click. So when they see the ad, maybe it's furnace repair question mark, and then it has call the call to action, which could be, you know, call now for a free quote. We have text on standby. That's an excellent reason. Like, okay, if I, this is my problem, they know how to solve it. And if I click on this ad, I'll have a tech in my house within an hour and they'll solve my problem. This is a reason. And this is one of the things a lot of companies overlook. They don't give enough reasons for them to click. They just boast about how great their company is and the, the customer will just you know scroll on by. And that's why it ends up with a low click through rate and high cost per click. Uh, it's just because they're not giving the customer a reason to click. So it's very important to do that. The next thing is take up as much space as you possibly can. And this is really done with one, extending the ads to their absolute limit. So if they're if you're allowed 30 characters in a in your headline, use 30 characters or use 29. Get as close as possible. Another thing to do is use extensions. As many extensions that are relevant to your campaign as possible. This will build out your ad, make your click-through rate as uh, large as possible. And I recommend doing this for every single campaign you do, just because the more space you take up, the more likely it is to get clicked on, uh, the higher chance you'll have a higher click-through rate. So it's a very good thing to you do. Uh, another thing is add multiple call to, calls to action. So sometimes one call to action doesn't resonate with a certain target market. So maybe furnace repair people really don't like email inquiries and they resonate more with um, you know telephone calls. So in the actual headlines, you could have call now for a free quote, but you could also get say instant response, get an instant response now, uh, free quote today. Add all these different calls to actions, and you can really see that like okay, you'll you'll generally have one that sticks out, and Google will figure it out. Uh, but generally, you want to add as many calls to action as possible, and give them multiple ways to contact you in the ad and allow Google to optimize for that. Just because calls to action are very important and you wanna give them a reason to click and what they're gonna be receiving when they do click. Uh, things to also consider, your first ad will most likely be a loser. Your second ad will most likely be a loser. Um, it takes time to develop good copy and it's done by A-B testing. Uh, luckily in this day and age, we don't have to send out you know thousands of direct mail pieces to figure out a winner and a loser. Uh, you can do that you know, very cheaply using Google's optimizing system for ads and it'll figure out a loser very quickly and a winner very quickly. And sometimes you need to write you know, maybe a dozen ads before you get one that's decent. So don't give up when you see one or two bad ads, keep going, keep pressing forward. Um, another thing is it takes time to think, uh, think and come up with ad copy. Don't just rush it, really think about it, give it some time and the results will generally pay because if you, it, it takes time to get into your customer psyche and think, okay, if I have this problem, how would I want something phrased at me so I can click on it? That takes time and don't rush it, think through it and generally you'll have success with it. So now I'm going to go on to the examples. We're going to go inside our account here. And this is one of the campaigns I set up a little bit ago. And I'm just going to walk you through some of the ad copy that we've seen success with. The first thing is the actual name of the company. I like putting in there just because sometimes the name of the company actually has brand awareness and that might boost your click through rate. Uh, most of the time it doesn't, but I like to put it in there um, just for, you know, sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. Some people really want to see the brand name. You know, it's always good to have. Uh, that being said, you want to include some of the keywords mostly uh, you want to just narrow keep narrow keyword groups so or sorry narrow ad groups uh, so add the keyword into the actual ad copy at some point and let Google play around with it um, 
That being said, then you really want to add on to another good example of looking for pool installation. That could be an excellent one with a question mark at the end. You can put that there. Um, looking for your dream backyard pool. That could be another one. And these are really finding the person's problem. And for this account, it's pool installation. So finding the per person's problem, solving it, and giving them a call to action. That's generally the structure of the ad. And if you do that, chances are you'll have a successful ad. Then again, not every ad is going to be a winner, but A-B test it, you'll eventually come up with a successful ad. Other things you want to add in are things people might care about. So interior warranty, award-winning pools, uh, that's good to add in. A GTA, this is the Grand, Greater Toronto Area, so location. So if you're targeting a specific location, so say uh, New York City, New York City pool installation, uh, that's very good because it resonates with that certain area and that certain customer targeting it. Uh, and you want to be as specific as possible to the individual. So if that person is looking for pool installation, looking for pool installation in New York City, uh, get a you know a certified pool inspector out today. You want to be as specific to that person's pro uh, problem as possible. And that's a very good way to go about coming up with ad copy and uh, developing winning ads. And these and these by the way are are headlines that have had tremendous success. I think we average right around eight or nine percent with these. Uh, they're not all uh, winners, but most of them are winners. So uh, yeah, so the, these have had success in the past. I'm not just pulling them out of thin air. Uh, pool installation companies near me, uh, get a free estimate today. Again, calls to action, uh, build your dream pool today. This is a, a, another one uh, that is solving the problem. Schedule a free assessment. That's a call to action. And as you can see, Google's just going to cycle through all of this and essentially figure out which headlines pair best with other headlines, and then we'll come up with a winning ad. Uh, the description is another important part of the ad. If you have pool installation as a keyword, you really then in the description want to go more in depth. So you could do professional pool installation, professional certified pool installation or in-ground pool installation, 20 years of experience, two-year warranty, really go in depth with what you offer to the customer and why your solution is better. So maybe warranty is really important to someone. Maybe uh, testimonials are important. So you could have you know, hundreds of happy customers, two-year warranty, certified installers, award-winning. These are all reasons and further down, I don't generally love putting them in the headlines uh, just because you really wanna solve the person's problem first and foremost, and then they might read the description. But if they are willing to read the description, at, give them more. So make sure to go into detail about what you have to offer and why your solution is the best. So hopefully that this gives you a good overview of building an ad. Another very good thing to do is look at the ad strength. You either want it good or excellent. Try to get excellent. It's not always possible. Um, but it's a very good indicator of whether or not your ad is going to do all right. And if it's at excellent, chances are it's going to do decently inside Google Ads. Uh, that being said, I always like to add a few things in there, like looking for a backyard pool, which may not resonate with Google, it might give you a lower score, um, but it really speaks to the customer and chances are you'll get a higher click-through rate with it. So hopefully that answers your question of how to build or how to write Google ad copy inside Google ads. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. I'd be happy to answer them. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.